Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, once is always enough. To punish you, I will do without. Today we're going to mash up two ideas. Conflate them is probably the better grammatical technical term because they are both unholy and they are both intertwined in their processed divinity and their illness of grace. Yes, both masters are inherently evil and awful. First, we'll discuss the idea of once is always enough. One and done. Or, perhaps more colloquially, we've already been there and done that. And that phrase, that awful phrase, is a powerful misdemeanor in the lives of most of us, even if we deny the merits of us. The second idea today is one of punishment and of embedded racism and of equality as a nation's point of purpose. And not just as a reason for being. It is the reason for existing. And to exist is to discriminate and wound based only on race and maybe, at times, gender, all by the almighty power of the majority, which, in the United States of America, at least, is currently, usually, the older, fat, white male. Don't look at me like that. I'm new here. And so now... We begin. Once is always enough. The majority power loves to try something new. Only one time. Just so they can stand above everyone else. And say they did it. And then also say to themselves. Privately. That they'll never ever have to ever do it again. Prime example number one, Barack Obama. First black president, historical. Oh God, we've done that once and so we'll never have to do it again, don't worry. That's the mindset. Does anyone in the United States think we'll ever have another black man as president again in, say, the next generation? the next 30 years. The eight ball says, probably not. What about an Asian president, perhaps? Or a Jew? Or a Native American woman? Will those do? Maybe. But never a black man again. We tried that, the argument goes, and look what happened. We got a revolution of revulsion in the pendulum swinging back too hard in the opposite way. And the uber opposite of President Obama was elected to office. A pasty, sullen, uneducated, fat white man with no morality is now the President of the United States. We get what our desires deserve. No thank you, future Obama man. Stay over there. We already did you. And look what we got back in return. Are you old enough to remember Geraldine Ferraro? Geraldine Ferraro was the first woman to run on the vice president part of a national ticket for presidency of the United States. She ran with Walter Mondale. The year was 1984. Not the book. The year. 
and Geraldine Ferraro was a disaster for the ticket. Or so the thinking goes. But the loss was hanged on her, yes, hanged on her, as she and Walter Mondale swayed together in the wild winds of loss. Sad. Hillary Clinton for president is another one of those oh-no-not-again moments in history. Perpetual loser, right? Can't win for winning, yes? Using Hillary Clinton's status and her gender, some argue, to get a second bite at the apple, she still lost. Hillary Clinton wears the mark of Cain and the embellishment of every other evil critter to walk the earth. All happening, deep, unseen, but there, within her black soul. But the theory of once is always enough is still there, right there, dogging Hillary Clinton even in defeat, before she can ever begin to begin again. Sad her. And what about Halle Berry, winning for the first time as a black actress, the award for Best Actress for the 2002 Academy Award for the movie Monsters Ball? And there hasn't been another black woman since to win that award in 15 years. And so we must ask and wonder... Is no black woman actress good enough to win Best Actress again at the Academy Awards? Or have we, as a quiet and loud racist nation, already been there and done that? You tell me. Halle Berry herself is flummoxed by it all. She thought her win was an opening of the floodgates for black actresses to go mainstream and win as much as the white folk before her. But little did Halle Berry realize at the time that she, Halle Berry, was in fact, it seems, a one and done. And as some have whispered aloud right in her ear in front of her, maybe she was just a token win. And hey, speaking of token wins, and been there, done that, what about Marley Matlin's Academy Award as a deaf woman for Best Actress in the 1987 movie Children of a Lesser God? Did her win open the floodgates for deaf or other disabled actors and actresses? Well, of course not. Because we already did that. Now we move on to our second clasp of conversation and collusion and conflation. To punish you, I will do without my friends who do not live in the United States sometimes ask me about racism and gender memes in the USA. Why is the USA so hung up on color and sex, they ask me and wonder. And the answer is as simplistic as it is evil. This country was founded on black slave labor, and fundamentally on the repression of women, wives and daughters, and the theoretical indentured slave. And the business and the intention of the government of the USA, local, federal, village, is to punish the wished upon and the undeserving minority. And... The minority is denied equal standing with the majority power. 
even if that means the majority power gets nothing as well. It is better to have not, some say, than to have equality. After the Civil War and the Civil Rights Movement in the USA, there are scores of things that started to subtly and not so suddenly happen in places of what had been white exclusivity. And these places were closed instead of stooping to admit blacks. One example is the public pool. When integration was forced upon them, those public pools chose to close, then to remain open and non-segregated. The local white power majority preferred that no one swim than for white children to go swimming in the same pool with black folk. And there are many other examples of the same sort of evil thing happening in schools and workplaces and sports, especially in the smaller towns and villages where people of color were expected to know their place by birth without being told. And that meant never joining the white folk in the whirlpool or sitting with them at the dining table. Unless, of course, you were standing there to serve them the mashed potatoes and gravy. And recounting all of that historical horror for you today in this human meme podcast leads me into thinking about Title IX, a sort of controversial federal gender equality law founded in the Educational Amendments Act of 1972 that declares, No person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. So, there's that. And, typically, in the United States of America, Title IX directly, and some say adversely, affected major sports programs at colleges. If the boys had a basketball team, then the women should also have a similar sport that had equal funding under the rule of Title IX. In the bad old days before Title IX, you'd have 12 major sports for men and maybe one or two sports for women. Title IX was enacted to equalize that inequity. But instead of creating more opportunities for women, the Title IX Act created fewer sports for men. Overnight, Men's swimming and men's tennis and men's golf and gymnastics and badminton teams, all male, were dismantled, defunded, and their closure was blamed on Title IX. And so the men's opportunities were dwindled to meet the meager expectation of women's sports under Title IX. And Title IX, instead of balancing the inequity upward for the women to meet the men the colleges instead took the lower road of the least common denominator, blaming budgets and money. And the colleges slashed the men's side to equal out with the substandard subsistence of the women's side. Yes, there we go. In Title IX, we see, feel, and know to punish you, I will do without. And we now know that thinking cuts both the color line and the gender line in the history of American unexceptionalism and education 
and counterculture and governmentalism. What's good for you maybe isn't what's best for me. We've already done that, been there, and punished. You do without, while I already do. And everything is enough. Enough even if we go backward. And even if we never try anything new or daring again. Just because it might mean you get to enjoy something I've already had. And that I'm now tired of. Because I'd rather burn down the town then let you live here with me in peace. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.